Have you ever found a product that you're so sure of, thought it was a banger, and saw a competitor scaling it, copied their landing page, but you couldn't make it work for the life of you? Today, I'm gonna be walking you through the best practices for product pages, how to build converting landing pages. I'm gonna give you the secret sauce, everything that we use on our product pages for our brands generating seven figures a month, even eight figures a year, for you to copy and take for free. I'm gonna walk you through the do's and don'ts, everything that you need to include on your landing page, on your product page, in order to make sure that you have full peace of mind and not have to worry about the product page and know that it will convert. That way you can focus on the creatives and the back end of the business so you can make your offer convert. But before I do so, I wanna welcome everybody that's tuning in. I appreciate you clicking on this video. I promise you're gonna learn a lot of good stuff today. So make sure you stick to the end. Let's get to it. I think this product page is crazy clean, no pun intended. I would add product images, a bit more product images, right? Maybe some before and afters of toilet bowls showing how this would help because not a lot of people would scroll down and check the whole page. So it would be nice to have product images right here, like a carousel that you can scroll between. I like the bundling. Also, it's hard to spot the price, but I usually would put a price right here and a compared to price. It's always good to have a compared to price because, okay, you're saving 35%. 35% of what though? You know what I mean? So you definitely want to in include a compared to price. That being said, always include GIFs on your GIFs, however you say it, on your landing page. It shows the product in action. It's not a video, so they don't need, the customer doesn't really need to click on it. It just auto plays. Easy, perfect for product pages. Okay. Trust badges are always a must again before and after is pretty much one two three how it works just shows what this product does some trust badges again as seen on these are very important a compare chart is always a good thing to add you're telling the customer why they should go with you over going with your competitors and then some testimonials from customers to gain some social proof and then customer reviews do not ever launch a product page without customer reviews you are robbing yourself from money you are just basically shooting yourself in the foot and always include a frequently asked questions just like amazon the best way to get these is to find your product on amazon and find what the frequently asked questions are and then don't copy them just rewrite them in your own words you can use chat gbt and then generate answers with chat gbt as well that's usually what we do and then the footer uh, you want a bit more in the footer in terms of views privacy about us contact us so on and so forth just a bit of trust badges would be nice i typically don't add any outside links if I'm doing a product page like this in a one product store. And in terms of what type of store I usually launch, because I get this answer, I don't really typically add any clickable links when it comes to my product pages because I want people to stay on my product page. And the only way for them to exit is either to press the X button or to go through the funnel and purchase. I don't want them to click around and wander off my page. I want them to stay on here. Make sure you always add the reviews at the top with the stars that is a very good trust factor as well. I also typically disable hyperlinks for my one product page stores. I only do one product page stores. I don't, or one page product stores or one product stores, whatever you want to call them. I don't do general stores. Those don't work. And niche stores, I only do once I have a hero product and I start adding other products to it. So those are the things that I do. The header, you always want to add your offer in here, free shipping, 50% off, a 10 year return. That's very smart, actually. I love the fact that they're talking about a 10 year return rather than like a 60 day or a 30 day and zero risk just definitely makes them stand out. That's very smart. I'm about to apply this on my brands because very smart. So I wouldn't include a search bar because including the search bar, unless you have a lot of products, a big selection of products would be again, distracting and useless. People aren't really going to search anything. I doubt anybody's searching anything on the store. So I wouldn't add that. Okay. Always make sure that you're add to cart is a full add to cart, meaning it has a color, not one that doesn't have a background. A lot of times add to cart buttons don't have a background. So make sure you have that. You always want trust badges right under the add to cart button and then a drawer at the cart would be the best way to go right here they're skipping cart completely which is very smart we do that on our brands a lot not always because we like to upsell in the cart but we do test no cart versus cart so that's something that you should always test as well 
Moving on to page number two, I really like the way this page is set up. Very clean, very straight to the point. The product is a knife, so there's not really much you can do with a knife. A couple things that I would improve about this product page is there's a glitch right here in the code. It seems like with the reviews, I would uh, fix this right here. I would also test moving the product images to the left and then the author to the right. I've never seen this setup before, but it is interesting to see. I would definitely add more images, maybe a couple of GIFs at the top right here in the offer section of the knife cutting through bones or cutting through a piece of paper or even watermelon. That is something that would definitely improve conversions and showcase the product in a better way, in a very captivating way that's convincing for the customer in order for them to check out. I would definitely get rid of this. Like I mentioned earlier, it's kind of pointless unless they're selling more products and their customer behavior is typically to land on a page like this and search for other products. Shopify does tell you that so you were able to make a decision off of whether people are searching or not to keep this or remove it but i personally always remove it a little bit more content here when it comes to just images and some copy a nice gif here cutting through steak which is great more content and copy trust badges and then reviews my boy is about to commit suicide here is he threatening us something like that but anyway yeah i mean this is a very solid page i would definitely definitely model after this i for sure get dropshipping vibes from the store if i had to guess i would i would think it's a dropshipper that has made the store it's very well branded and very well done i would definitely add more bundling i would bundle maybe a knife sharpener with this very good product that goes very well with this that would be very compatible congruent product that would sell very well as a bundle with this product i would not have a one-page cart i would either skip directly to checkout or have a cart drawer where I upsell that additional item like the knife sharpener or like a knife bag or something like that. Here's another one of my favorite stores. Very, very nice looking, beautiful color palette. I love the save 20% neon green that's linked to the offer on the offer section. One thing I would fix is the title. I would definitely add a bit more explanation or make it a bit longer so you can add a bit more value to the product and explain to someone who doesn't really know and wants to just get an idea about the product title. This is something that Amazon does very well. And typically they have these very long winded titles that almost have everything in there. You don't want to go that hard, but it's definitely a good thing to always add a bit more specific detailed information, mainly the top selling points of the product and the title. So it looks like it's something that's worth the money and worth the customer really giving you their money. So I love, you know, how crisp and clear the images are I wouldn't really do the zoom I would have it so the carousel it's a carousel kind of imaging situation this is not really carousel this is kind of like spread out and typically when people have to do this it's it's not really that functional I'm assuming they get a lot of their traffic on mobile so their desktop is not fully optimized but I wouldn't do this I would just keep it so it's carousel I always like the carousel setup when it comes to product images much easier much cleaner much more efficient efficient when it comes to navigating it. I feel like there's a lot of missed space here. Again, they're probably optimizing for mobile, but it's always very important to optimize for desktop because you will get people that will come through desktop and you want to make sure that your desktop page is optimized. This is a very good GIF showing the product being used and the puppy going in. That is very good. Again, trust badges. As you can see, product pages and stores really implement the same tactics, the same strategies. And once you have a good understanding of what is a good good landing page and what are the different elements of a good landing page all you have to do is apply the current product that you're trying to sell and that's it really so you don't really need to go reinvent the wheel every time and here you have customer testimonials their customers being these little puppies and then frequently asked questions again very similar to the other page and the reviews very beautiful review setup and their footer let's try to check out and see what they have a bundling option right here frequently bought together at the car and there it is the drawer with the upsells which is something that we always do and then you can just check out so very solid funnel 
very nice. Not much I would change about this. Again, I would add a compare to price right here and the amount of savings that people are saving. And I'd make this a bit bigger. It's hard to see. But aside from that, very, very clean landing page. Love the palette. Beautiful. All right. So here's a perfect example of what not to do. This product page is very disorganized, very messy, very low quality. The pictures are low quality. The logo is low quality, as you can see. Whoever built this page, with all due respect, did a very poor job at it. Starting from the top all the way to the bottom, there's a bunch of mistakes and typos in the header. This is useless, as mentioned before, as well as this. Unless you're running a subscription, you don't want people to sign into an account. Also, we should always remove the menu because you don't want people clicking off the page, as I mentioned earlier. Same with the breadcrumbs. You don't want breadcrumbs on the page. It's pretty much useless. It's just messy. It adds a lot of real estate that could be used for something else. In terms of the title, the title is, is all over the place. It doesn't even make sense, to be honest. Buy three free shipping. You should never have the offer in your title because it just makes things so much messier. I don't know why there's a triple XL. I've never seen a cat that big, but I guess they exist. It's being marketed as a cat product, but then there's dogs on the product images. It's just all over the place. It's very, very disorganized. There's no congruency and real flow to the product page. The product page has so many different color palettes and colors being used, so many different buttons. They're cross-selling and upselling the same product twice. You should never upsell the same product twice unless it's on the post-purchase level, which is after the customer checks out. If you want to upsell something within the funnel, it needs to be very congruent with the original offer. For example, if you're selling a mouse, you want to sell a mouse pad, something that goes very well with that product. A bowl would work well here, something that cat's toy would work well, so on and so forth not the same product twice because now you're confusing your customer and you're having them not know which one to buy. You don't want to give people too many options or else it will hurt your conversion rate. Now, as we scroll down, you can see that there's even more added products here that are just being upsold or cross-selled and it's just all over the place. This is such a messy store. If you look at the reviews as well, it says that there's 38 reviews, but then a lot of these reviews are repetitive. It's the same images, it's the same same review. This shows that this product is abandoned almost and nobody's really paying attention to it. There's no existing customer support whatsoever. You never want to enable zoom on your product images unless it's a product that requires people to zoom in. Like, why would I want to zoom in to the product? You know, and now it's like very inconvenient. Now it's covering the offer when you zoom in, just very unnecessary. There's not much description. Well done description. They did add a GIF, which is good. Still, I would would never want to launch anything like this in terms of the product page very very poorly done so just make sure you take everything i've mentioned into account and make sure you always use very high quality images. These images are very low quality. And in order to avoid that in the beginning phases when you're testing and you're using existing content off the internet, you can use those product images as long as you're not violating any DMCA or copyrights. You can take those product images and put them through a tool called Remini.ai. It's an AI powered tool. I'll include it in the description for you guys to use it. I don't get paid from them, but it is a tool that we use on our brands in order to enhance product images in the testing phase before we order the product and actually launch it and brand it. So here are the things that I would avoid as well as implement. In terms of the million dollar question, whether you should do a one product page store, a niche store, or a general store, I always go with the one product store, one hero product store. And then I typically, once I validate the winner, validate it as a brandable product, I start adding congruent products that allows me to grow that product into a brand with multiple products within it, congruent sister products that could also supplement revenue and provide other options for people looking for different types of products. And there you have it, folks. This is the exact strategy, setup, and outline that you need to implement on your landing pages and product pages in order to make sure that you have that peace of mind and not have to worry whether your landing page is fully optimized. If you like this video, make sure to subscribe. I really appreciate you tuning in, man. I'm going to be dropping a lot of videos sharing all the value and experience that I have with e-com. I'm going to show you a little bit about my life. I'm going to really take this YouTube thing seriously because I want to share my life, my knowledge. People always ask me, hey, 
why aren't you on YouTube? Now we're gonna make it happen and you're gonna be here to see it. And in order for you to see it, you need to be subscribed. So make sure to hit that subscribe button. I really appreciate it. If you are getting into e-com, if you're interested in e-com, if you wanna start your own brand, if you're already working in e-com and wanna scale, make sure to check out my link, the first link in the bio. That is the link for my mentorship. You can go ahead and apply there to hop on a call with me or one of my team members and we'll see if you're a good fit for us to get you on the program and get you started or scaling so check it out man and like i said i appreciate you tuning in i appreciate you being part of braille part of everything that i do following my journey and i hope to be able to share and provide as much value as possible and i'll see you in the next one